Hello, Warrior Women, Karen McCoy here. And today I want to talk about your default setting. What is it? Is it getting in your way and how to kick it to the curb for your body transformation success? So what is the default setting? So the default setting is where you go when the poop hits the fan. Um, and where do you go in your head? What is the emotional place? What is your emotional home when you're hitting a major speed bump? So to be clear, I'm not talking about if you're in the workplace and you obviously, if you're at a higher rank and you have been um, taught how to manage strife in the workplace and how to manage people, I'm not talking about your business strategy um, uh, skill set. I am looking at in real life with real people like your close family or your your loved one or your parents or some place where it's like you just go into that place. So let me give you an example of some emotional homes that people hide out in. And probably you're in one or several of these, but we always try to look at the main one and just start with one at a time, the strongest and the deepest. So default setting is usually, we're going to look today, we're going to look at defaults. I'm going to move this a bit. And triggers, okay? They're kind of the same thing because they are both, the teachers in, in the group are like shocked at my lack of writing on the board skills, right? I get it. I know, I know. Um, so default and your triggers. So the default emotions are also the trigger emotions. So where do you go? Is it fear? Is it anger? Is it sadness? Is it shame? Guilt? It might be resentment. It might be apathy, right? Um, it might be pride. All of these are the lower, denser emotions where we go in our default setting when the poop hits the fan, okay? So first I want you to consider a big event that sends you into la-la land, okay? What is the emotion? What are you feeling? So you are triggered in a way from that event. Here's the deal with triggers. And I teach this in my in my 16 week mastery program, but I just want to give you a piece of it because it's so it works so well with the clients I work with. The triggers are never about the present. They're unhealed pieces of the past. Right. We may be triggered by a song. Let's keep it small and simple. <laughs> um, we may be triggered by a scent. We may be triggered by a certain kind of person that may offset us because it represents somebody from our past. Um, all sorts of things can cause us, uh, can create and cause triggers in us, but it's always rooted in the emotions. Now, if you're afraid to go to the emotional plane, then this is probably not the video for you. And I'm certainly not the coach for you <laughs> because unless we get to the root of it, which is based in our emotional world, we will not see any change. This is why 95% of all women, all people don't get results in their body transformation, or if they reach them, they can't sustain them. They lose their results within six to 18 months because it's never just about the food plan and the exercise program, guys. If you're there and you're staying there easily and effortlessly and you're aging well and you can rock it for the next 30 years, then you found your place. Brilliant. So then you're off and running. But if you're not, I want you to listen into this video, please, because most trainers are not coaches. Coaching is a skill set. It is a certification and it requires a lot of time and a lot of investment in our own journey and an investment in psychology and, and people's habits and how we think and a cognitive restructuring, which allows the coach to be able to see where you're operating from. We step into your world but it takes time because I need to know what, how do you live in your world? What is the meaning you put on things? So we'll get into that in a second. So first of all, I want you to write down when the poop hits the fan, where do you go? So I want to give you a scenario or oh, another big one. Sorry, I should probably add in here is isolating. And that would be based in fear, but a lot of people isolate, they hide out. Okay. When they isolate themselves, 
there is a fear of being seen, fear of being vulnerable, fear of making mistakes. That lone wolf archetype, which is one of many archetypes I work with, the lone wolf is probably the hardest for me to coach through. And the reason for that is because they don't want to be seen. And that's where I'm like on email saying, where are you? I didn't see your check-in. You didn't show up for our class. Well, I'm not doing well. Exactly. That is when coaching matters. It's not when everything's great. When everything's great, you don't need me, right? So I was at the airport recently and I got to see the default setting in play. Doing this work for so many decades, it allows me a different perspective on people. And I can kind of step outside, you know, kind of like being the witness like they teach in Buddhism. And I can step on the outside and see the ob objectivity in it. And so the flight was canceled where there, there were different pockets of people there. And the response was radical depending on where their default setting was. The poop hit the fan, the plane was canceled. So there was one guy, big guy, who went up to the um, flight attendant desk and was screaming and ranting and raving and how dare you do this? The airline service needs to compensate us and and it's just going to hell in a handbasket and this is inexcusable and on and on and on. Okay, so he was in anger, obviously. The next gal was a lovely gal and I love that she was sitting over on, on the bench and she was like, oh, what are we going to do? And she had her head in her hands and it was like, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Right. So she is who I would call maybe a wallflower who sees life happening, but prefers to sit back and hopes it turns out on its own. And I'm not really going to step in and take a lot of action because I would rather just be out of it all. And so she was in um, fear for sure. She was deep in fear going, Oh my God, what am I going to do? There is a third lady, God bless her. She was asleep on the couch. Now, she could be a wallflower that checked out, but she could also just be somebody who is actually enlightened. I don't know. She was sleeping. I didn't get to, I didn't really get to look at her or chat with her. But that kind of person is like, if I'm if I'm reading her right, which I honestly wasn't really reading her because she was asleep, but it would be interesting to chat with her. A lot of those people are like, it's okay. It's gonna work out. I trust. It's going to work out. And so when you have those people, it's like, God bless them, <laughs> right? God bless them. Um, everything's going to work out fine. <laughs> and so I just lost my light here. And so that is somebody who's grounded and rooted. She has faith. It's okay. Like the sky's not falling. We're all going to be looked after. I'm going to have a snooze here. Wake me up when there's a solution. The fourth lady was very cool. She, um, walked over to the other side of the desk away from the ranting man and said, okay, so our flight is canceled. We had a bunch of people here. We all need to get to Toronto is where they're going. We all need to get to Toronto. What are our options? Is there another plane? If there is, when is it coming? Will it be able to take all of us? If not, do we need to get a hotel? And I went, oh, she's my girl. She's the one. If there is a catastrophe, I want to be beside her. So everybody has their default setting, right? And it comes out at those times when you're pressed. So know your default setting. My default setting, in all honesty, I'm in anger. So I have anger as a fuel, right? It's like jet fuel for me. I don't always like it. I've had to tame it. But when I look back, I had that as a little girl coming from a pretty crazy childhood where I needed to yell and rant and rave in order to be heard because there was ranting and raving everywhere and, and also to be able to fight my way into feeling like I'm protected because I didn't feel protected in my family. So I had to create this exterior to feel protected. Now, had I gone the other way and been a wallflower and a, like I would have felt crushed. And this is where some people go is they hide out. They they're like, right. And so their entire life, they don't like confrontation. They don't, I mean, I don't like it either, but they, there's a different way of handling that kind of scenario. My scenario was to go in like a bull in a China shop because that was the only way I knew to keep the boundaries away from me and keep me safe. So I have carried that with me for 
over 60 years. <laughs> and I have learned though, in this work that I do, because we as coaches are always doing our own work. If anybody says that they've arrived, uh, 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 don't believe them, Charlie, because this work continues, but it gets easier and faster and you, you're not, you don't have the attachment to it anymore. And that's the grace and the freedom that you get in doing this personal uh, development, empowerment, coaching work that, that I had the pleasure of doing and teaching. And so now I can look at anger and go, okay, ah, there I go again. There's that five-year-old coming up. She's feeling like she's being abandoned or attacked. And it's not always the case. So I have to use the tools and the skill set that I teach in my mastery program that I teach to other women. I have to draw on those as well. And it's so automatic now because I've been teaching it for so long. I bring those in and I can just, I can sift the dust away. And I can look at it and I can be objective and calm and go, okay, anger, pop you on the back, uh, back burner here where you need to be. I'm not making you wrong because these are pieces of us that helped us survive, but I need you over here. And then I can move in with clarity and a strategy. So that's how I work it through. And that's how I, I teach my clients. So the triggers are, I was triggered because of you know, I would be triggered by something that happened in my past. And these people in the airport, they were all triggered. And one went to anger, one went to fear, one went to isolating. And that one lady either has worked on her triggers or she's just not, hasn't had triggers in her life. And not many people get that gift. So no doubt she has worked on herself and she stays steady in the storm, right? And so this is where we want to be on this planet as women so that whatever we're moving into if we're changing our body changing our habits changing our our career changing a relationship changing even our view of the world and our belief system this work is very very valuable and it's a necessity so underneath all of this what runs the show it is emotion so the feeling is is the is the power the feeling is the work so you got to feel to heal and you got to, but, but, you know, as you move through the feeling work, there's freedom on the other side. It is all rooted in your belief system. Okay. So write this down and I want you, and this is what every client coming into my program does. And it's an exercise in week one and we do a um, self-limiting beliefs, get the junk out detox. Now, you don't just get to throw them to the curb and they're gone forever because they've been living in us forever. And so they will come back. But once you make your unconscious self-limiting beliefs conscious, now you can work on them because you can't work on something that's unconscious. You can't change something you can't see. So it is about letting them come up to the surface. So the exercise that I do allows them to come up to the surface and we go back and revisit it throughout the program. And even after the program ends forever, because the, the beliefs will try to come back in. Here's the deal. Beliefs are not reality guys. They are meant to change. We don't believe in the tooth fairy anymore, but our psyche, how we're wired hangs on to beliefs for dear life because our beliefs create our self identity and the psyche feels if we don't have that self identity, we could die we could dissolve. That's just how the brain works. It's how we're wired. That's why this rewiring, this recognitive, uh, cognitive restructuring that we do as um, coaches in the psychology piece is super, super important. Understanding how a client is wired and their view of the world. And this piece is the foundational piece to making change in your client. And too many coaches call themselves coaches, but they don't have the coaching certification or the know-how or the years of practice, okay? So I always say a trainer trains the workout and a coach coaches a person, but be careful when somebody says they're a coach. Unfortunately, this may ruffle a few feathers. I don't care. If you're a competitor, you're not a coach. Coaching is different. I competed seven times. I was not a coach until I did this work starting 30 years ago. And I continued with the certifications, with the work, with the work on self. This is the most important place we need to start. 
Because if I'm not shifting me and going through and doing the work and the painful restructuring I have to do, then who am I to ask somebody else to do it? And how can I teach them? Okay. If all you want is a food plan and a workout, then there's a million people and a million places you can get that guys. And that's cool too. If you're happy and you're reaching your results and you're sustaining it forever and ever easily, effortlessly, then you found your thing. And I'm happy for you. The women I work with are the women that are stuck on repeat, rinse and repeat. They don't know what they don't know. They kind of know this is what it is, or they might have read about it in a self-help book, but reading about it and having somebody as a mentor and a coach to lead you through it in a structured program, totally different. Okay. So The women I work with are the women who want to go to the root of it because when we're at the root of it and we change it, it affects positively every aspect of our life, our relationships, our marriage, our family, our parenting, our work, our relationship with money, right? Everybody has scarcity of money. No need to, no need to guys. That's a belief system. Well, I'm poor. That's your belief system. That's why you're poor. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's going to ruffle feathers, guys. And I'm and I'm not talking about, you know, there are extenuating circumstances. I lived there too as a single mom in college trying to pay the bills. I get it. But I didn't live there for 30 years. That was a passing phase and I just had to buckle down. But as you move into life, we have to reframe and take a look at things. So what coaches do is we reframe the meaning around. So when I'm working with somebody, I need to understand what is their default setting? What are their triggers and what are, what are their belief systems? How do they see the world? How is that set up? What meaning do they put on things? So those beliefs, let me give you some examples when it comes to wanting to lose weight. Oh, it's going to be hard. Oh, I've done it before and failed. I'll probably fail again. Now, a lot of these are unconscious, guys. They're not things you actually consciously know, but you can feel them because you might move into something. You've got the honeymoon phase, the first few weeks, everything's great. You've seen some shifts in the scale, blah, blah, blah. Things plateau or your brain. And this is why I put it in my mastery program at week four and five. The brain starts going, you mean we got to keep going with this? Really? (laughs) And I have a little... (laughs) A, a little process, a little exercise that we do in week four and week five, because I know what's happening because your brain, this is just psychology, guys. It's how we're wired. The brain is waking up going, oh, it was fun for a while, but we got to stick with this. Oh, and that's when we start to self-sabotage. That's when some women, I don't hear from them. They don't answer their email. They don't show up for the call. Why? Because their brains, their psyche is going, oh, come on, forget it. Let's go back to the way we were. We like it the way we were. The psyche does not like change, guys. Okay. We are hardwired a certain way. With all of this, you are hardwired. So all we're doing is rewiring your brain. And it takes time. It takes consistency. It takes big C coaching. It takes uh, a desire to want to look at things differently. And I always say the two most important skills that you can have to make this work successful, got to stay open and you got to stay curious. And if my women can promise to be those two things, they're going to move mountains. Okay. So back to the belief system, self-limiting unconscious beliefs. Well, if I I don't want to eat like this all the time, it's 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 boring. Uh, I hate eating like this. I want to be able to eat what I want. I want food freedom. That's a big one. Well, we all want to eat what we want to eat, guys. I'd love to eat what I want to eat, but I'd be three hundred pounds. Honestly, I would, uh, because I love food just like the next person. I've learned to to work with food in a adult way, <laughs> with discipline and commitment. And that feels good. Okay. So there's this new um, meme going out on social media. Discipline is a four letter word. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Discipline and commitment is what adults do. I always say to my women, and I know some of them are listening and they're going to be rolling their eyes. Sometimes it's time to adult up. Okay. Like we can, we're either in child energy again, something I go into the mastery program. We're either in child energy or we're in adult energy. Okay, mother energy, where we want to get to, too, is we want to get to empowered woman energy. It's a different place. Child energy is is where 
Um, I see women who have been trying with their diet and losing weight and they're doing all this stuff, but they're worn out and life is wearing them out and they got so many responsibilities and they ricochet the other way and go, screw it. I'm going to eat whatever I want. I don't care. I'm tired of it. They go into child energy and then they've had enough of that and they see the results of it. They're not happy with their body and the weight gain. They go, oh, okay, go back to adults. Like, oh, I got to go back to discipline. I got to go back to set food plan. I got to go back to the gym at 530 in the morning and they make it like it's a prison. Okay. So <laughs> discipline is how when we have good discipline, it raises good kids. And the kids that don't have discipline are all over the place. And every every research paper, every um, every uh, success group, everything that we look at says discipline is necessary to live a full, rich life, to reach your successes and sustain them. Okay, so let's throw out that meme that says discipline is a four letter word that is just said by people that either just want to um, shake things up or they're they're just lazy. That's all. So beliefs, um, yeah, I've got some written down here. Eating well is hard. It's not tasty. Do I have to eat like this forever? Um, I failed before. I'm probably going to fail again. I'm not worthy is a big one. Some women, they have a fear of success. Who am I to have a lean, shapely, sexy body? And they get scared. They only know themselves as a bigger woman, as a woman in this certain environment with this certain place right? And they can't see themselves as that. You have to really see yourself as that. And this is where the quantum field comes in and all that kind of stuff. The envisioning, this is a big piece of what I do. And I'll go into that in a minute. But the five big beliefs that women have coming into working in a body transformation space is a fear of success. Okay. Also in that fear of success, please know that there are some women that fear reaching success because they don't know or fear how it's going to change their relationship or any relationship, not just their, not just their partner. Um, I had one woman years ago that say, said, I said, do you, you know, again, asking questions is better than get, I don't give advice. I ask questions so I can draw it out from them so they can see it and own it and have their own aha moment. That's what coaches do. And I said to her, you know, you've done everything right. Seriously. But why do you think after 16 weeks, you're still at the same place? Because it wasn't about the food strategy I gave her. It wasn't about the exercising. We gave her the tools. You know what she said to me? I think I'm afraid of losing weight because I think then I'll want to leave my husband. And I went, oh, okay, I get it. It's not the first time I've heard that. But she voiced it so clearly. And I thought, bravo to you for having the courage to even recognize and say that because that is freedom. Now, did she, you're wondering, after all this time, years later, did she? No, nope. she hasn't lost a pound and she's still with her husband. So this is what we do. This is, this is the world we live in, okay? So people ask me sometimes, do you offer guarantees on your program? Nope, because I can't guarantee that you're going to move into the work. I can guarantee you, I will give you everything that you need but the work is on you. And she clearly said, and, and it was seen in her years after, I didn't do the work because I'm afraid. I'm afraid to get to that place because I'm afraid that I would want to leave my marriage and she decided to stay. And, and maybe things are going great. Maybe they, they, they fix things up and, and um, her, hopefully her health is good and all of that stuff. But there's a fear of success. There's also a fear of failure. How many women have done the same thing, circling the drain and they haven't. So they're, they're saying in their heads, there's that little part of their psyche that says, you know, you've done this before and you haven't, you haven't uh, succeeded. It's probably not going to be good again. That's a self-limiting belief. It's not true. Anybody can have a great body transformation, guys. That's, that's what I know for sure. It is the self-limiting beliefs that get in the way, the self-talk, right? Um, there's also a fear of what other people will think. Sometimes uh, I had one woman that said, well, my dad said to me, the reason you want to get um, you know, strong and shapely is because you want to attract a man, right? Where do our parents come up with this stuff? Some of the worst things have been said by parents and it sticks in our brains, 
<laughs> right? Um, and that still plagues her today, but she's worked through it. And she is one of our success gals in our program. But sometimes it's shocking to hear, but it's more shocking for the client to recognize it. But once it's out in the open, it starts to dissipate. So that's the other thing is when these unconscious beliefs and patterns and conditioning comes up, guys, a lot of people want to keep stuffing it away, stuffing, 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 but it never goes away. It shows itself in other ways. It affects your marriage. It affects your work. It affects your energy. It can lead to health crises, all of that stuff. That's too, too big a topic for this uh, video, but we have to be careful of recognizing that the only way out is through and you got to feel to heal. So um, the other belief is uh, a feeling of what do I have to let go of? That's a big one. I have to let go of my weekend binges. I have to let go of my comfort food at 11 p.m., which is a bowl of Jen and Barry's ice cream. Um, I have to let go of. Um, oh, there's so many things that, that women are afraid of letting go of my my relationships or when I go out sometimes people go out on social outings some people have a very active social life a lot of it is around food and drink it doesn't have to be um you can still enjoy and I've seen this countless times with women going oh my god I went out for a night and I stayed on track I didn't even think about it and I had a great time probably better because I stayed on track and I didn't have to fill my face perfect right? So it is uh, the fear of what I have to let go of, again, is just an unconscious fear that's man-made in our brains. Rather than that, look at look at the delight of what you will attain, not what you have to let go of. And so this is where Anthony Robbins always talks about pain versus pleasure, right? We're either moving away from pain or moving into pleasure. But sometimes the pain uh, we return to it time and time again. There's that old joke about the little boy and the farmer walking through the field and there's a dog lying on his side and he's moaning. And the little boy says, why is he moaning? And the farmer says, because he's lying on a stick. And the boy says, well, why doesn't he move off the stick? And the farmer says, because it's not painful enough. That's kind of human nature. Sometimes we don't move into stuff unless there's a dire need, unless we're at the end of our rope and the pain is insurmountable. I prefer to work with women before that, um, but sometimes that's human nature. So here's where what we want to do. So remember the default setting. What is your emotional default setting when the poop hits the fan? Those are your triggers. Okay. And those are often set in your past from a belief system that has built around it. Life isn't safe. I'm not safe. I'm not cared for. I'm not worthy. This is hard. I don't deserve this. Universe is out to get me. Whatever happens to be. But for the last piece, I just want to share this with you is we want to look at how we move from our old self-limiting beliefs and, and um, contracted self-identity, which doesn't serve us because these things can always change. The beauty about mindset is it can change in a minute. The body takes a long time to change when it comes to losing weight and toning and shaping and getting strong. Flesh and blood, man, but the mind can change in an instant, but that's the power that scares people. They're like, no, I have to go over it and feel it and find out why, and I gotta dig up in my past. No, you don't, no, you don't. You wanna start from here and move forward because we don't wanna live in the past anymore. And so here's where we look at the um, view of the world right? The view of the world. And then that's the current, but we want to have a future view of the world. This is just a little piece of coaching that I do. So this is like the 1.0 version of us where we are now. Okay. How do we see the world? What are our belief systems? What is our self-talk? And then the 2.0 version is where do I want to be? Like, who do I want to be? What does that look like? What does that feel like? This is what I call the North Star, okay? This is the North Star. This is where I get women to sit and we go through this exercise. What do you want? Well, I want to be healthy and, and um, happy. Everybody wants health and happiness. Let's break it down. What does that look like to you? Give me a day in your life. What does that look like? Okay, you're, what are you wearing? What does that feel like? 
You ever notice women that buy new shoes? You just walk differently. You're just like, you got your shoes on and you're like, oh, you're strutting, man. I always remember that. Um, just strutting with your new shoes. My husband, he loves running shoes. I swear he's got like 30 pairs. Every time we go to the mall, I try to like, you know, map around the shoe store because I know we're going to go into a shoe store. And every time he gets a new pair of sneakers, he's like walking, <laughs> right? And so that's his 2.0 version. He stepped into, right? So the North Star is how do you want to look? How do you want to feel? And this is where women are afraid to dream. Well, and they'll say, well, I, I don't want to, you know, I, I know it'd be impossible, like 150 pounds I need to lose. But what, what if I just lost 40? Okay. But what if you lost 150? Well, and they're like, oh, it's just too much. And so they draw back. And so this is where we, we look at on, on, in a perfect life, if you were to live it over again, what is it? How, how do you want to walk, move, think, feel, breathe, like everything? And that's the 2.0 version. So this is where we want to operate from. When I have women over here and they stay here, and this is where most women stay when they try to find a new food plan, they get a new workout plan. They're on the, the do-it-yourselfers. They're info junkies. This never comes into play. It does for a few weeks, then it wanes because this is an elastic band where if you don't have um, a strong structure here in a process, and you don't condition that where I want to live from every day, you ricochet back like an elastic band to your old version of your old self, because this is what your psyche knows. And so this is building a new belief system, new self-identity, but it has to be conditioned every day. That is the toolkit and the skill set that I do in my, in my mastery program with women every week, because we have to strengthen this. The challenge with a lot of diets and a lot of trends and all that crazy stuff is that it gets you all souped up for the first few weeks and you're feeling great, right? Woohoo! But it doesn't last. It doesn't last because nothing's changed within. And so they fall back into their old belief systems, back into self-sabotage, back into where they were. That's why 95% of all people embarking on a body transformation program lose their gains if they reached their gains and their dreams, lose what they um, fought for within six to 18 months. Why? Because there's no change. This is the change. This is the quantum theory stuff. This is walk and think, you know, when people say, I'll believe it when I see it. No, you'll see it when you believe it. I'll believe it when I see it, people. I'll see it when I believe it. So we step into and look at window shopping for the values and the beliefs that successful people in whatever space you're working, if it's money, career, body transformation, relationship, what do those successful people have in common? What do you need in order to be here and operating from here? Because if you're here, you're down in the lower energetic frequencies, if you will. I know it sounds woo, but that's what runs the world. And that's what's running your world. It's like gravity. If you don't believe in it, it's still going to affect you. If you jump from the building, you're still going to hit the ground. So universal laws are at work. And I would really impress upon you guys to get informed about universal laws. So the ones that we work with are the ones directly related to creating an awesome body and life because you can't have one without the other. I see people with awesome bodies and they have shitty lives and they're living in fear and anger and, and uh, resentment and they're working so hard. It's hard work to keep this body and I hate eating like this, but I'm going to do it. It's living in resistance, guys, and that wears down your body and your health as well as well as your mental health. So where we move into has to be from a place of no resistance. Where most people are living is in resistance, fighting, fighting, fighting for that great body, fighting to lose the weight, fighting with their food plan. You're not going to sustain it from that place. That is why the belief system and how you operate needs to come from a higher level of emotional work, which is living in and understanding and operating from bliss and joy and freedom and acceptance and self-worth and self-esteem and envisioning, right? 
courage, clarity, tenacity, then this is a reality. But when you've done another diet and you failed and you're down in shame and guilt and frustration and, and resentment of other women that did it and you didn't, you can't get a great body when you're operating from those lower, heavier, denser emotions. It doesn't work. Or if it works, you don't sustain it. I had one woman that I chatted with years ago. She had lost 100 pounds five times over. Five times over. So I said to her, I offered her to work with me. And she said, I'll think about it. What do you have to think about? Well, I don't know if if I, I don't know. Uh, what did she say? I don't know if I want to um, pay the money. Okay, the money is often just a, just a thing to, you know, hang on to, to say, well, I'm really scared of doing it. So, and I don't want to spend the money. How much money, how much time have you spent in losing and gaining five, 500 pounds. She said, probably 20 years. Okay. So, um, I gave her all the information and I set her off and I never heard from her again. So what it was, was she had created a belief system in her brain. And I mentioned this in my master class too, about B who was a lady I worked with for years. She had created a belief system that said, I can lose the weight because she could lose the weight. She lost a hundred pounds. I can lose the weight, but I can't sustain it. And she proved that to herself five times. <clears throat> so that is her self-limiting belief. And that is the pattern, the habit in her brain that kept coming back. Every time she reached her success of losing a hundred pounds, that psyche went, mm, 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 mm. well, you know, uh, you can't maintain this because she didn't have the strength and the mindset that shifted to allow her to have a different self-identity as a woman, a hundred pounds less. She was self-sabotaging because she felt uncomfortable a hundred pounds less. No doubt being lean and strong and looking and feeling great. And part of her, and again, I wasn't working with her, so I don't know exactly, but part of her likely was saying, I don't deserve this or I'm uncomfortable with this, right? So she gained the weight and then she'd do it five times, guys, 500 pounds. Can you imagine living like that? So that is my talk on default setting. Come to know your default setting. Look at your triggers. Look at the beliefs underneath. The beliefs are linked to the feelings around it. And that is what you need to become conscious with. <clears throat> and it's super hard to do it on your on your own. I always say to my girls, you can't read a self-help book and do this stuff. This is where mentoring, leadership, coaching, whatever you want to call it, is invaluable in this process. But it takes time. It takes patience. We are rewiring your brain right? Because right now your brain is wired in a certain way and the, the little neurons and the neural transmitters are firing in a certain way where you have a thought and you have an action, thought and an action, and there's a pathway. And what you need to do is create another pathway, but this one's well-worn. So this one takes consistency of action, not thinking, but action. And pretty soon that pathway is deeper and this one is no longer holding you in prison. That's really how it works. We are just wired. We're a bundle of nerves and we're just wired to react in ways that, that the body doesn't have to change and doesn't have to work at it and doesn't have to expend more energy. That is the inertia that we need to move against to create the body and the transformation and the life that we want. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. If you want to book a free call with me, it is complimentary. It's a 45 minute call. Um, I am there to take a look at. There's a short questionnaire that comes out. You book around your time, your schedule. I do calls Monday through Thursday and we take a look at where you're at, where you want to be and a strategy to get you there, but it is not just looking at your food and your exercise. I need to look at that as well. I will make suggestions around that, but we will go into your inner landscape, the foundational piece, your mindset, your beliefs, and I can see them pretty fast just by talking with you because I've been doing this for 30 years. And so that's the part that I love and that's the part that creates lasting change. If I see that we're a fit, 
I may outline the mastery program for you, but please don't be offended if I don't. I look for certain clientele to work with. I don't work with everybody. It has to be somebody that's coachable and committed, and they have to be willing to get uncomfortable. Unless you're willing to get uncomfortable, there won't be change. In fact, that could be what is holding you back is that you don't want to be uncomfortable or you're uncomfortable for just a little while and then you pull back. When you're uncomfortable is the root of all change. That is when coaching matters. So when I have women say, well, I didn't show up for my calls because I I didn't do well, that's when you need to. So my women show up or I find them. <laughs> and when I find them, they show up because if they hide out, I can't help. So coaching matters when you hit a speed bump. That's why, that's why we're there. It is not when everything is great. It is not to tell you what to do. It is to reframe and look at things from a different place so that you have your own growth, so that you can learn to run your own life, your own body, your own habits, your own thinking from the highest level, what we call the 30,000 foot view. But it takes time and it takes mentoring to show you how to do that. But that is how we're supposed to live and operate. That is the freedom that women over 40 are wanting to step into. We look to the body first and go, oh, if the body was just better, if I was aging better, then everything would be good. But the, the body and the weight and the lack of motivation and the, and the checking out with bad foods or whatever it happens to be, that's not the problem. That's the symptom. The problem is this deeper stuff. So we work from the inside out. I hope that makes sense. So book a call if you want. We'll chat. There's also a little, a short little masterclass that I have the link in there. I ask you to watch it so you know how I do things differently. I'm not mainstream, guys. I don't follow trends. That's why 95% of people don't see success because they're in that mainstream world. I do differently and I need you to understand so that when we're on the call, then you're prepared and you know what we're going to look at. So the coaching link is uh, www.warriorwomanfitness.com slash apply. It's all you need to do. Calendar will come up. Um, the questionnaire will come up. You'll book a call. I will call you and we will look at where you're stuck. And my whole role on the call is to ensure that every woman on the call gets one or many aha moments where they get clarity. They get a breakthrough. They're like, oh, now I see. That is my main goal so that you can walk away seeing things differently so you can move in differently. Okay. Thank you. Anything comes up, pop them in the comments below. And uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this. And I hope it was helpful. Okay, warrior woman, just know you are so, so worthy. Ciao.